Hello, and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the second video in the STM32 LVGL series, and as I mentioned in the previous video, today we will integrate the touch with the LVGL. We will also build a GUI application using the Squareline Studio, and see how to implement the UI with our project. Here I have the library files for the touch framework, that is, XPT2046. I hope you have the same libraries for the display you are using. Just like we used the template for the display driver, we will use another template for the touch driver. You can locate the template in the similar way, by scrolling down the input driver interface page. Change the LVGL version to 8.3. Here you can see the template for the touch driver. I am also going to copy some functions from another project I covered on interfacing the ILI9341 with the Touch GFX. In the previous video we saw how to integrate the LVGL with the STM32 project. We will continue where we left the previous video. The Touch interface uses SBI, so we need to enable another SBI in the Cube MX. Let's see the pinout first. Here are the pins needed for the touch interface. We have the clock pin, CS pin, data in, which is the MOSI pin, and data out, the MISO pin. Here you can see how they are connected. We have the interrupt pin also, but I am not using it for now. The LVGL template doesn't need the interrupt pin, so we will not force it for now. When I tested the button on the display, it was responding fine, so I did not bother with the interrupt pin. But I did get some unwanted touches, so I guess we might need to use it in future, especially when we will cover the slider, or scrolling items. So let's not connect it for now, and if needed, we will add it in future projects. I am using the SBI2 for the touch interface. Enable the SBI in the full duplex mode. Enable the interrupt for the SBI. The data size should be 8 bits, and let's keep the board rate around 5 megabits per second. Let me remap the SBI pins as per my connection. Set the CS pin as output, and if you are using this library, make sure to name it as TCS. Alright that's all for the configuration, click save to generate the project. Now add the touch library to the project. Copy the C file in the source directory, and header file in the include directory. Just like the LCD controller file we created for connecting the LCD drivers to the LVGL, we will also create a touch controller to connect the touch drivers to the LVGL. Copy the in-depth template code from the GitHub, and paste them in the respective files. Let me delete these extra lines. Here we will include the touch controller header file, and fix this LVGL header file inclusion. This file has the initialization code for the different input devices, like touchpad, mouse, button, keypad, etc. I will just leave the touchpad related code, and delete the rest of them. Alright let's include the main header file, the LCD header file, and the touch driver header file. The indefinite function contains the touchpad in it, this is where we will initialize our touchpad driver. So let's initialize the XPT2046. The touchpad read function does not need any user code. Touchpad is pressed, 
and touchpad get x y are the functions where we need to input the code for the respective operations. As I mentioned earlier, I am going to use the touch controller file from another project. I don't even understand how these functions work, but anyway, we will make it work. This code is utilized by the touch gfx to sample the touch, so I am putting it in the touchpad pressed function. Notice here that the X and Y are the actual touch points that are passed to the touch GFX. But the LVGL function does not have any parameters. So we will create a structure to store these values. Now store the touch point data in the structure. Touchpad get XY is used to read the touch point data. Here you can see the function is called after the touch is detected, and the points are stored in the variables last x, and last y. Since we have the data stored in the structure we defined, we can directly pass the value to these variables here. This method works for now, so I am going with it. I might change the implementation in the future videos, when there will be more complicated touch inputs like sliders, or scrollers. I am not sure if this method will work with those touches. Anyway it depends on your touch driver, and what kind of library you have for the same. That's all for the touch controller, let's build the code now. We got a few warnings, but that's alright. Now we will see how to use the Squareline Studio, create our project, and include the files in the STM32 project. You can find the studio link on the LVGL website itself. You can register and get a license, it's free for the personal use. Download and install the studio from here. If you are running it on Mac OS with a Apple Silicon, you need to check this, open with Rosetta. Alright let's launch the Squareline Studio now. I am just continuing with the trial. Click on create, and here you can see the available platforms. Just click on the desktop, and then Eclipse. Let's create a folder where the project files will be saved. Give some name to the project here. Set the screen resolution for the display. You can set rotation, shape, etc. Make sure to choose the correct color depth, and the LVGL version should match with the one we have downloaded. Let's create the project. Here you can see the screen in the middle, on the right side we have the properties of the components, and on the left we have different components available. I don't want the white background, so I am changing it to red. Let's add a button to the screen. I am also adding a label on this button that says change color. Now we need to add the click event for this button. So select the button, and then add event. The event name is event1, and it will be triggered when the button is clicked. For the action, we will call a function. Click add to add the function. The function name is going to be button 1 clicked. So when the button is clicked, the function button 1 clicked will be called. We will write the code inside this function later in the IDE itself. You can go to project settings, and modify the project properties. I am going to add the path where the UI files will export to. Let's create a new folder here and name it UI. The UI files will export inside this folder, so we can easily copy them to our project. Modify the project properties as per your requirement. Then save the project, and generate the UI files. If you check the project folder now, you should see the UI folder got populated with some files. Let's copy this UI folder, and we will paste it inside our STM32 project folder. I am pasting it beside the LVGL folder, 
so that it will be easier to locate. Now open the ID, and refresh the project. You should be able to see the UI folder here. We still need to add the UI folder to our project path, just like we added the LVGL folder. We follow the same method to add it to the project path. All right now include the UI header file in the main file. And after initialization is over, call the function UI init to initialize the UI. This is the initialization function, which initializes everything we created on the screen. The UI event source file contains the events created during the designing. Here is the button one clicked event we created. We will write the code inside this function, which will be called when the button is clicked. Let's define a variable index to keep track of how many times the button has been clicked. We will increment this variable each time the button is clicked. If the variable has a value equal to 1, we will change the background color of the screen. Here is the function which can be used for the same. This is the color which will be set. Similarly if the variable has the value 2, we will change it to some other color. I am doing it 5 times, and after that the index variable will reset to 0, and everything will start from the beginning. I am just setting random colors here. Alright let's build the code now. We have an error in the UI header file. This LVGL should be included like this. Actually you can set this in the project properties itself. I also forgot a very important thing. We need to include and initialize the touch driver in the main file. So include the touch controller header file, and after the display has been initialized, initialize the touch driver. Let's build the code again. We have no errors here, so let's flash it to the board. You can see the UI has been loaded on the display. The button is responding well, and the colors are changing as expected. So we included the touch driver in our project, and we also saw how to use the Squareline Studio to design the UI for our display. I hope you understood the video. The link to download the code is in the description of this video. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.